Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the third event of ACT's Spring 2015 Lecture Series towards Civic Art. I'm Gediminas Urbanas, Director of the MIT Program in Art, Culture, and Technology. The Monday night lecture series was launched in 2005 with an aim to bring together artists, cultural practitioners, and scientists from different disciplines to discuss artistic methodologies and forms of inquiry at the intersection of art, architecture, science, and technology. Our spring 2015 lecture series towards civic art investigates the critical spatial practices that claim manifold definitions of public art through a diverse array of visual forms argued by key practitioners. Across the disciplines of art, pedagogy, architecture, and urban studies to identify the tools, tactics, and consequences of actively reclaiming public space. The title towards civic art is borrowed from Georgi Kepesh text published in 72 that alludes to the artists and cultural producers grappling with the convex systems when addressing environmental crisis, politics, and democracy. Kepesh wrote, today artists like the rest of us face a profound crisis brought about by the increasingly dynamic complexity of our social fabric. Meeting its challenge requires their fundamental reorientation in order to probe, scan, discover, absorb, change, and re-edify their surroundings. They must transform themselves as well as the social framework of the creative process." End of quote. Tonight, I have a pleasure of introducing two guests to you, Doina Petrescu and Konstantin Petko, who formed the collective Atelier d'Architecture Autogere. And sorry for my French pronunciation. My first foreign language is Russian, you know, so that's why. Konstantin Petko is a Paris-based architect whose work stresses the intersection of between architecture, urbanism, service design, and semiotics. Dona Petrescu is a professor of architecture and design activism at the University of Sheffield in UK. Her cross-disciplinary research addresses outstanding questions in architecture and urban planning, focusing on the issues of civic participation, and gender and the relations between co-production and resilience. She is editor of numerous publications, including Altering Practices, Feminist Politics and Poetics of Space, 2007, Agency Working with Uncertain Architectures, 2009, Translocal Act, Cultural Practices Within and Across, and most recently, uh, Social Reproduction of Architecture, co-edited by Petrescu from 2015. Atelier Architecture Autogere, or uh, AAA, is a professional organization which conducts actions and research on participatory urbanism and architecture involving local residents in self-managing projects in their neighborhoods, engaging in social, ecological practices, and initiating resilience networks. AAA has been awarded numerous prizes, including the Curry Stone Design Prize in 2011, the European Prize for Urban Public Space 2010, and the Pri Grand Prix Public de, Public de Architecture Contemporaine et Metropole Parisienne in 2010. Tonight, Petrescu and Petco will revisit the notion of co-production in the context of their recent participatory projects in Paris. Please, join me in welcoming Donna and Constantine. Thank you, Gediminas, and thank you all of you being here and to welcome us and hopefully uh, to be interested in what we will present. Is this working? Yeah. Um, so uh, the notion of co-production um, is a sort of... Uh, buzzword uh, in these austerity times, at least in Europe, we are uh, discussing quite a lot. 
uh, and it calls for the necessity to engage citizens in uh, self-providing services in a context in which the public services um, and the welfare state are not there anymore. Uh, so co-production is currently seen as uh, mainly an economic and in the, base, in the best case, a social project. But for us, as architects, uh, it is also a political project, and it is rooted in uh, Lefebvre's ideas uh, of uh, social production of space. It is not only about citizen needs, but also about citizen rights. And in this case, the citizen right to the city not only the right to occupy space in the city, but also the right to decide about how the city is built, managed, and used. And this right, uh, even more urgent, uh, is even more urgent in these times of austerity and ecological challenge. Uh, but this political project needs ideas, tools, spaces, time, and agency. And it needs also agents and activators, and uh, we think that as architects we can be such agents and activators of a long-term social, economic, and ecological co-production of the city. Uh, we will introduce a number of recent projects that uh, we have realized as Atelier d'Architecture Autogéré in Paris, uh, addressing uh, the question of architecture as co-production as a collective and emancipatory practice, empowering architects and user alike, and shifting from the elitist profession to a shared activity and a relational political practice. Um, uh, AAA, um, we define it as an activist practice um, that we set up in 2001 in Paris. Um, and our aim was to uh, promote uh, alternative strategies and tactics for a bottom-up transformation of the city by its inhabitants. And again, for, for us, this was a social, political, uh, and economic project. And we have many, I would say, um, reasons for, it, for conducting such a project that some are uh, biographical. We are both coming from a former communist country. We have immigrated in France and uh, we sort of brought with us um, a culture of uh, communality that uh, we didn't find in France when we arrived there. Um, but also we were interested in um, reconnected with a particular history of architecture, which is, uh, I would say, the history of participative architecture, which was always a little bit uh, undermined and uh, marginalized uh, within uh, the mainstream architecture. And also, of course, with a history of activism and, uh, you know, a number of uh, activist projects that uh, uh, were dealing with uh, urban struggles and uh, uh, citizen um, initiatives. And uh, we wanted uh, to create tools and space for such production, and, and we propose ourselves to work towards this infrastructure uh, and, and, and its agency uh, as a form of commons. Uh, and also we started to act there where we live, uh, in this case in Paris, uh, in an area called La Chapelle, uh, which is uh, um, some, somewhere in the north of Paris. Um, here, uh, in one of these red areas, uh, which are uh, zone uh, urbaine sensible, uh, you can uh, maybe see that there are most of them in the north of Paris. Uh, these are areas of social and economic deprivation, um, but they have um, um, somehow, uh, um, they, they represent also opportunities for uh, new types of projects uh, be because uh, there are specific uh, programs and uh, uh, funding opportunities, uh, you know, projects Politique de la Ville, um, to regenerate such areas. And, and we were thinking that um, uh, this would, you know, uh, would be an opportunity and we use this um, uh, opportunity tactically uh, so our first project, uh, Echo Box, was in 
the area in which we were living. The second project in the same kind of area, uh, Passage 56, and the current project, uh, Rurban, uh, is uh, in a suburb um, near to Paris uh, and is implementing a bottom-up strategy of resilience that involves citizen in collaborative practices and solidarity networks to generate uh, resilient ecosystems in their neighborhood. But let's start with the first project, EcoBox, uh, that we have started in uh, uh, 2001, uh, which is a network of temporary and mobile self-managed spaces. Okay. So, how, uh, like Dona, she mentioned before, so you started to um, to try to develop uh, another approach, another professional practice in 2001, in the place where uh, it happened to live, in this uh, island, urban island in uh, in north of Paris, uh, with a lot of uh, with a high rate of immigrants, so 4500 uh, percent, including us, with a high rise of unemployment and uh, with uh, very few or sometimes any cultural um, uh, polarity. So it, it's an area with 30,000 uh, habitants without any bookshop, without any cinema, without any museum, etc. So the Parisians, they don't come uh, in uh, no time because they don't have reason to come. And this uh, um, uh, island situation, this uh, enclavement, it's a multiple one. One is a physical one bec because they are railways uh, around, but it's a cultural too because they are separate uh, comparing to the other uh, cultural uh, equip equipments and, uh, of the city and it's a social too and economical one. So uh, living here, uh, you decided to try to develop uh, a professional practice connected with this uh, um, condition of the area where you live and parallelly so, and uh, directly you start to be involved with like citizens, like residents. So it was in the same time a, a double head, uh, this one of uh, architects and the second one it was of a citizen, of a resident. And in fact, it was a third one because uh, it happened to be teachers in the, same, in the same time and it started to work with our students in the beginning. And uh, so this is, uh, current situation with a very large separation between the city and the area. And you started by ma mapping the empty space, this island condition, enclavement multiple, and with a lot of uh, leftover people, uh, poor people, uh, homeless or young people, sometimes revolting. And uh, you discover mapping the area, a lot of uh, leftover materials, trash or gravel from the former railways and uh, and you discover too a lot of uh, empty space like here or empty commercial space like here and uh, you suppose it to be in this situation for some years and uh, you discover too to be very bad connoted by the residents because of course uh, this kind of empty space uh, it was a uh, condition for uh, Apparition, uh, apparition of uh, prostitution or drug addicts people. And uh, so it was, uh, there was a lot of uh, space like this one and the uh, area, it was very bad uh, mediatized in journals. And uh, you supposed to be able maybe to obtain and to use this kind of space for a temporary lapse of time for four or five years and to maybe to try to reconsider them in a positive way. And uh, in fact, later you discover to be in this condition for more like four or five years. For example, this one there with the same uh, angle of pictures of you. For 10 years, they remain the same. And uh, actually you are in 2015 and they are the same. So in fact, this temporary condition, it's a, it's a medium long-term condition. So they, it's like, uh, uh, huge uh, uh, space opportunity, uh, keep it like that in a very negative way because nobody don't want, uh, any developer don't want to put money to, to develop project because the area is poor. 
and uh, and Ali is more and more poor because of that and uh, parallelly because parallelly because uh, this area it was really uh, enclaved and very bad perceived a lot of uh, phenomena uh, around public space uh, started with 2001 and much more in 2005 when there was riots in Paris and some of this intermediary space like semi private or semi public there was fenced and some of them uh, initiated uh, so this fencing there was initiated by the collective or residents and sometimes by the city hall by example here is uh, one of the central square in the area who was very successful because a lot of people uh, they play a very traditional game in France called boule and there was people from originally from France but from Asia too from uh, Maghreb and it was a very open space because it not was fancy and it was open seven day and uh, 24 hours by day and uh, because one of the neighborhood she complained uh, the city hall decided to to fence and uh, and in fact they destroy this public space and the uh, phenomena uh, in the other sense it's very difficult to be produced because to open a space uh, a, a closed space to be open and to be run without anyone to gardening to or other ones in 24 hour condition it's very difficult process so we started to trying to transform this uh, bad uh, uh, process, uh, the, uh, uh, this multiple process of destroying public space, of privat privatizations, of uh, uh, alteration of social relations in another sense. And because, uh, of course, starting with Lefebvre, but uh, more recently by Alain Touraine, you know, French sociologists, they conclude about the disparition of the city and because the social relation, uh, normally the background of the social and uh, city condition, they disappear, they are destroyed by this kind of phenomena. And uh, Alan Turin, for example, he concluded about the dead of the city. And uh, our approach, it was to try to transform this condition. And we started with our students to discuss with the local people. In the beginning, you don't know nobody because you just moved in this area from another one. And you started by asking them if they are involved in the civic, uh, in the civic uh, life, if they have questions, if they have problems, if they have uh, skills possible to be shared with other ones. And step by step, you build a, a, a database, an archive of answers of different people, uh, classed by by questions and you started to display them in different public space and step by step you start to to communicate about the possible project uh, using this empty space this empty void space and fridge in order to provoke uh, a change of imaginary of people about this space because i repeat they was very bad connoted and trying to obtain them from the owners and to open and to create new process it was in the beginning, a very difficult process to uh, uh, trying to change the mentality of people and the perception of people about that. So we started by postering, by uh, giving tracts about the project, and uh, by mapping more pre precisely the empty space. And uh, in order to be able to obtain them uh, them for uh, temporary use, we started to map uh, some. Uh, potential local actors. So uh, the first people encountered in our dialogue, some schools, some local non-profit organizations, etc. And for every site, you are able to know who they are the local actors possible to be involved and interested to develop um, collective use. And uh, you map to uh, the local waste in order to build and to reuse because you started from nothing without any commission, with just with our pocket money. And uh, in 2002, he was able to obtain an uh, empty space, uh, 300 square meter empty space in this location. It was in front of a warehouse, empty warehouse uh, uh, from the railway company. And uh, you, you plan to, to build a series of device, but a mobile device, a series of mobile device in order to be able to move all the device in the moment when the a bill for the land uh, finish. 
And the first device imagined by us, it was a garden, a mobile garden, built with pallets and gravel and other uh, waste. Because uh, speaking with the people, we discovered to be the more uh, transcultural um, um, kind of activity possible to interest different kind people from different cultural horizons. And uh, it started to build a prototype, and later in 2003, on the spring, you open the space and uh, the people start to come to ask what's happened. It's a squat, it's, a, I don't know, they are drugs, addicts, and you explain to them, no, 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 it's just a garden, for instance, and if you want to, it's possible to come and to build a, a individual or familiar plot, and maybe later to develop other kind of activities, depend of a few of them. And so, by example, in this picture, it's possible to see a family who come in the morning and they build an individual plot, and there are some other uh, people from the garden helping them, sometimes they are kids, and on the final of the day they have a real garden and they was able to build some social and neighbor relation with people who they never meet or they never know before. And later, because the process it was, uh, process it was successful, the owner uh, offered us the possibility to have a bigger space, so we passed from 300 square meters to 3,000 square meters, so but there was empty and deregulated. Uh, so you clean with the residents, and it, it's a form of appropriation. So cleaning, it's a very important, uh, I don't know, Gesture. managerial act in our opinion. Mm -hmm. And later there was other kind of appropriation of the space by um, piercing for holes in order to give visibility of the action from the uh, ga from the interior space, from the garden space to the street in order to pass across the uh, fence with the plants. And step by step, there was more and more people from different minority, from Maghreb, from uh, uh, Black Africa, from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, from Asia coming. Uh, and uh, initiating different activity in a very informal way on the beginning. And on, one of the more successful, it was uh, to cook together. By example, in this image, there are uh, two cookers. One is this guy in the smog. It's a Maghrebian one, but very political active in uh, order to, def to defend some rights. And uh, the second uh, cooker, she was a, she's a Japanese artist who is living in Paris, and they cooked to the, together hamburger, a kind of hamburger with hummus, and sushi with merguez, and so the space uh, began to be a place for dreaming, a place for imagining other way of meeting each other, uh, other ways to to cross uh, social barrier and cultural barrier. And our role, uh, it was to, to follow them, so to follow the beginning of the use by uh, building, imaging with them some uh, mobile device. So the first one, of course, it was a mobile urban kitchen in order to follow this first uh, activity after the garden. And later, you built with them a mobile library. All of the mobile uh, module, they was able to be uh, packed or moved and reopened in order to be used or a tool bank, a media lab with different mobile ones, small ones with different parts. And there was all the time a pile of pallets possible to be reused and recombined in different way for sleeping, for bees, for uh, installations. And in fact, what's happened in this space, step by step, a layer of activity of desire appears. So, and uh, uh, starting with our desire to reclaim and to obtain space and after to build and to self-build with the residents. And later there was a lot of people coming for gardening and with us to build uh, uh, mobile modules and to decide together, to design together which kind of module must to be produces, uh, produced after one after one. And this one, by example, it's a local broadcast, uh, local radio, uh, in a uh, moment, 
uh, with the crossing uh, local people, some of them with thought papers, with uh, important European media activists. And some of them, they come uh, regularly in the space, so step by step, they start to know each other. Uh, so local people, they was uh, familiar with some uh, Parisian or European artists and uh, media activists and sociologists. And uh, the place start to be uh, multiple uh, actors and multiple uh, motivation plays for political action, for microeconomy, uh, for political discussions and debate with uh, philosophers, with filmmakers, etc. And what is important, by example, in this image and this picture, there are local people uh, debating with important people. And this is very important because usually uh, people without uh, employment or people retired uh, with a very banal uh, profession, they are not, uh, uh, usually they don't speak in public. Uh, and it was a place to learn how to, to speak publicly because they was really motivated by the project, by discussing about the project. And why it's important because the project, it was built it physically together with these users, and uh, it parallelly it was the project, it was built symbolically together with them. Because they, the discourse about the project, it was built together with them, and it was um, uh, usually discussed by all of uh, or the more Im involved people. And this was important because later, some years later, when it was planned to leave the project because of the role of AAA, AAA is to, to start new project and to leave the project to the user in order to be self-managed by them. And these people who was really involved symbolically too, not just physically, there was important to continue the project in the same direction with the same value. And another important picture is this one in which it's possible to see a DJ table where it was a local young woman originally from Morocco to play. Behind her, uh, there was young boys to play football. And in the background, there are students and local people to build new modules, new mobile modules. And in, on the back, there are some candles because behind it was a local market. And in the evening, it was a, a international seminary. And what is interesting to see all this mix tolerating each other and usually it's not so easy to produce this kind of uh, cohabitation of uh, different culture or rise on different social uh, uh, condition. Uh, and uh, so on this play, they, it was possible because they, was, they know each other and this confidenti confidential uh, situation, it was built in a very slow process. And another process important of to be confident and people, it was, it was to give them keys of the space. On the beginning, it was, you was a little scared because, in fact, there are 3,000 square meter, and if you give a key, it's a really huge risk to have fire, to have a lot of possible accidents. And, and you start to, because the, uh, don't giving keys, it was like a paternalist and uh, assisted, assistant condition for, uh, between us and them. So we decided decide to try to give keys uh, for some space, exterior ones, much more. And step by step, you give more and more keys. And in 2005, when uh, the space, it was uh, in the, his uh, very big peak of ac activities. There was 80 family to have keys, 80 family, big families. They are between five, six, seven uh, members. And you run the space without any important problem, in fact, any time. So uh, it, it's very important uh, device to, to, to give the capacity to use the space from uh, their own when they, and, and in 2005, in fact, the city hall, the central city hall of Paris, they buy the land from the railway company and they decide uh, to stop the project because uh, they consider to have very urgent uh, delays. Uh, but in that was really true. And, uh, and we tried to explain them to be a nomad project, a mobile one, so a temporary one, of course, but a mobile one with the possibility to remove and to relocate the, the, the project. And it was a little difficult to explain that because it was not usual at all in this moment, this kind of strategy. 
and the resident, residents, they refuse to be evicted, and they react, and they come with us to the city hall, and, and they reclaim new locations. And finally, we are able to obtain uh, four new locations, and we move the project by hand, including the garden, and hopefully it was a new location, a temporary one again, in front of the first one, and in 2006, this is a new EcoBox garden location because there was other location in interior space for the other activities. And this is summary. So in 2001, you started the project, 2002, and the building of the space, including the garden in this picture. In 2005, you are able to obtain a new location, a new temporary location. And uh, so in 2006 and 7, uh, you decide together to create a new non-profit organization called DecoBox, and you stay in this uh, new organization for just for one year in order to learn, to teach them how to run administratively the project. And, and, in, and after AAAA left the project, and because it was, again, a temporary location, in 2008, uh, the garden, it was demolished, but they keep some office. And they was able, because they learn a lot of it, they was able to map other space to negotiate new bills uh, and contracts and to relocate uh, again the project in 2009. And the project is still in this location. Maybe in the future he move again. And uh, the municipality, they learn uh, a lot too. They start to initiate the kind of, this kind of procedure of protocol, but sometimes it's a little artificial. And starting with 2006, you try to represent uh, the process and the project a little better, uh, accepting pictures and, and photographs. And uh, this is the initial map of the area with the empty space. The two initial uh, people involved, uh, me and Doina, some students from Paris and two other friends, a sociologist and an architect, motivated a lot by different things, but uh, especially by two. One is by architecture, act acting, it's in red, this loop in red, and by citizenship, by activism, it's in brown. And so you start by mapping, by connecting uh, local actors and institutions, and in 2003, uh, there was a lot of people involved in the in the project, local ones, but not just local. So this is like a scale, uh, special scale uh, grid. So this one, they are from the same arrondissement, from the same district, but this one, they are from other parts of Paris. And this one, they come regularly from other cities or from other countries. And what is possible to see, there are more and more loops with different motivations, by example, you try to resume just to nine principal motivations. Uh, there are nine, nine colors. In yellow, it's a free time. So in the beginning, they come just for free time from leisure, just to observe, to, to understand what's up. And in green, it's for gardening. And there are many loops, because there are many groups of friendships involved in gardening. In blue, in blue it's for cultural activity. In uh, pink, it's for economical activity. and. Uh, it's another yellow, more uh, brown, it's for management. And oops, in 2004, there are more and more people involved. And what is interesting, so there are some of them like us, but other ones involved in different activity, in three, four, five activities. And this is very important because these key people, key members of the project, they was able later to run the project without us because they was involved in the, all the complexity of the project. And another important aspect possible to be observed in this mapping is the car translocal character of the project. Uh, it's, I mean, there are local people involved, but they are really connected for a lot of motivation with people from the other uh, area of Paris, more, uh, I don't know, uh, more rich or more culturally diverse. And this is very important in order to disenclave this local and isolated condition. And in 2005, it's an important moment because it was a moment when you move from one location to four new locations. And uh, so, uh, 
and the social relation, the motivation relation, they remain more or less the same. They are enough strong in order to, to be sustainable. And probably you know in uh, sustainability, sustainability there are three uh, big directions, economical sustainability, ecological and, and social ones. And the social, it's very difficult to be built, to be obtained because usually they are not institution able uh, possible um, with the capacity to build, to provoke that, that. And why you are able to do that? Because you spend a lot of time with them being residents and offering a lot of free time for us and provoking uh, uh, f in, an involvement by the free time of people from uh, uh, the, themselves. And uh, I have, you have another very nice diagram like this one. Uh, it's like a, it's not commercial, so they are the same colors, so it's easy. And this is a timeline, but it's much more like an order. So starting with 2001, every people it's with one line, and later if they pass to other activities, they add new lines. And this is the same thing, but in an isometric way. So every year is the same uh, scale, and what it's possible to observe better in this part is the emptiness of the project in the first two years and the mono uh, conditions of the project. It was built much more by activists and architects, including students here. And later, the people, they come just for free time or gardening or culture in the winter much more or economy. And in 2005, when the project is to be evicted, a lot of them, they start to protest so they begin, uh, they begin to be like local activists in order to save the project. And it's very interesting to see people who come just for gardening, sometime later they shift to cultural activity or to economical one. Sometimes they shift many times. And in 2005, a lot of them, they shift to be local activists. And some of them, they was without papers, in fact. But the project, it was very important for them. And this is a project possible to be um, defined in Guattari terms like a resubjectivation. So it, there are a lot of people without a very serious subjectivation, uh, subjectivity, because they are uh, homeless, because they are retired, because they are uh, unemployed. And in this space, by all this multi-layer activity, they was able to offer each other uh, a new subject. Uh, the gardener, the organizer of uh, flea market, the organizer of uh, cultural screening, etc. And and this uh, resubjectivation condition is very rare in, in, in rare in our society because usually you are pushed to, to be isolated and a lot of time to be excluded because you have less and less uh, capacity in Europe, uh, less to, to find work, etc. And uh, for us, this uh, reshift, multiple shift and resubjectivation condition and political one is very important. Maybe we can even say that uh, this moment uh, is one of the most important outcome of the project is the emergence of the collective political subject of the project. Uh, and uh, after this, uh, the project became uh, really civic political. Um, but uh, yeah, it's maybe interesting to see also that we have also transgressed our own roles but because we mapped ourselves and and we, we learn how to do gardening and we learn a, a lot of things, uh, managing as well. So we were part of this um, collective subject. Uh, in uh, another way of uh, expressing or uh, representing the process is uh, to show this uh, uh, shift, I would say, from the very initial phases that were uh, uh, you know, phases of research, of initiation, where the actors were mainly uh, few organizations, a few institutions, and us, uh, to a management period uh, until uh, the moment when we were threatened with eviction, um, and when we had to negotiate with the city hall uh, a new location, 
we have started a co-management period where we passed on all, all our knowledge to a newly formed uh, Ecobox uh, organization that was the organization of users. And when they had to uh, leave again, uh, they were able to negotiate by themselves with the, uh, with the authorities a new location and now the project is uh, completely self-managed. So, so um, uh, this uh, process uh, was uh, also parallel by a, a sort of uh, diagram of activities. Uh, so we can see that, for example, architecture that uh, Konstantin mentioned is represented by red, by the red color. Uh, was a sort of continual activity. It, it was not like in a traditional project, you know, first is the project, uh, you build arch architecture and then you use it. So it was a, a sort of incremental activity all along, including the moment when uh, the user were self-managing the project, uh, but also how the different uh, activities have, uh, uh, have been diversified and uh, and also, uh, very important, at the moment when we were treated with eviction, it was a peak of activity, and I think that this uh, was uh, guaranteeing the momentum to pass over uh, this kind of traumatic period and uh, survive somehow or mobilize uh, um, uh, the group to claim another space. And, uh, and we can see also that this uh, type of activities were kept more or less uh, all along and the, the diversity stayed with, uh, within the project. And this is the economic uh, diagram. Uh, on the top, uh, we have represented the, uh, the type of funding that we had and the moments when we had funding. And on the bottom, the value of work that has been put in the project, uh, uh, the clear, um, uh, Green is uh, uh, voluntary work, and uh, dark green is paid work. So we can see the unbalanced presence of, um, let's say, uh, work or type of labor that was put in the project, but also the important, we wanted to represent the value of this voluntary labor and just to quantify uh, the value of the project. And uh, also we can see that we had uh, funding from different sources, uh, but this was very important because, for example, at the moment, this moment of eviction, we had funds. And, and this was important uh, because this so, sort of uh, maintain us uh, um, in this limbo period, uh, so we, it was paradoxically the moment when we had the most funds. And at the end, we managed to secure to subsidize post, and then this was very important because uh, uh, somehow the, the, the funding stream has been um, uh, stabilized, and then this uh, allowed the user association to hire two people to work uh, permanently on the project. Um, this is another representation of the project, uh, which is, uh, sorry. I have uh, so um, where um, uh, we represent uh, mainly the um, uh, our architecture as actors of a network of actors, uh, and I think this was a very uh, important lessons for us: the fact that we had to uh, use temporary space and to kind of. Uh, think about architecture in a different way as something which is mobile and, uh, um, and which, um, uh, which is appropriable in a different way. Um, and uh, the different devices uh, were themselves nodes in this kind of networks of uh, relations that were created between actors, uh, objects, uh, institutions, and, and space. Um, and at the end, uh, this very local, let's say, architectural project on 3,000 uh, square meter had a huge effect in the area, in the neighborhood. Um, so we were um, uh, starting here, and then there were um, two locations. Um, 
uh, there were other projects uh, that were influenced, uh, like the 56 project that we um, uh, uh, realized in another location, but also local projects. And now uh, um, a third uh, location for the Ecobox projects. And somehow with the temporary project, we realized this kind of di uh, rhizomatic, this uh, dispersive network of projects and groups. Uh, and we realized that each time when the project was relocated, that there was at the same time a group of, um, the same group moving, but also newcomers that would uh, question the power structure within the group. And it was somehow a form of, a more democratic form of governance that was created by this, um, uh, you know, uh, temporary use. Um, in such a way that um, the project was continuous, but also uh, renewed and um, 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 with, with each location. And, and I think this is part of, uh, of the secret <laughs> that made the project sustainable, the fact that it, it would refresh itself with each new location, that there were, again, new questions, new, uh, uh, new members, um, um, entering the decision process and uh, somehow, uh, uh, you know, a way of maintaining a, a, demo, a permanent democratic uh, uh, kind of functioning of the project. And at the same time, the area which is, um, of course, there are reasons for this different location because the area is in transformation, but at the same time, uh, okay, uh, each time we lost a space, but a new group was activated, so more people in the neighborhood became socially, politically aware of, um, of, of, of space uh, and, and the, of the access to space in the city. And, and it is a little bit like a rhizome. Um, um, the, the whole information that was, you know, in the mother project was transmitted to uh, to the leaves, uh, to the next project, and, and so on. So, so this project transmitted uh, at its time, um, uh, at its turn, uh, to the next project, and so on. So it is a sort of uh, living network that was created. And part of this living network is our second project, uh, Passage 56, which, is, which has been developed in a similar uh, urban um, context. Um, Again, uh, um, in the uh, east of Paris, um, but uh, in a much smaller space. It was a former passageway that has been closed when this block has been built. And uh, um, the, the, the space was uh, only two uh, square meter, 200 square meters, uh, but it was much more exposed. Um, uh, to the neighborhood because it was uh, on the main pedestrian street of this uh, area called uh, uh, San Blaise. Um, and uh, it is one of uh, also an area that has been built in the 70s, one of the, uh, with the highest uh, density in Europe. Uh, and uh, because uh, of uh, the, the, the windows uh, of, of these uh, tall buildings, uh, uh, it was not possible to build anything there, so the, the space was fenced and kept like this. It became almost a garbage um, dump there. And um, we uh, follow somehow the same models, the same method as in Ecobox, and it was something that we discovered by doing the first project. Uh, so we organized a consultation and we asked people to uh, project their desire on the space uh, during one of the um, public events in the area. And then we displayed these desires and then we asked them to come and enact them. Um, we have mapped also the public space uh, avail available in the area in order to, you know, to think about possible networks, uh, to network this space that was so small. Uh, with other spaces and with other actors. And, uh, and we started to clean 
the space as a first uh, act of appropriation with, with those that wanted to do it. And also we started to inhabit the space. We asked people to, to bring furniture and to try to enact uh, those activities that they were proposing. Um, and uh, little by little, um, we define what is possible to be done in such a small space. Um, and um, uh, we uh, decided that we will have a, um, a sort of uh, office uh, greenhouse, uh, a patch of uh, uh, gardening, uh, a compost uh, and a toilet, uh, a neighborhood wall, um, and the canopy with the possibility of having uh, outdoor activities, and that all, all these uh, different elements would be built by those that uh, wanted, as for example, this one, which was more sophisticated, was built uh, during a training program with youngsters from the area. Um, this one was built with students. Uh, this one was built by the inhabitants, and so on. Um, and. Um, uh, and we, we, we started to build the space uh, as, as it was negotiated with the possible users. And in fact, uh, the whole project had three phases. Uh, this phase of uh, informal occupation where we have tested activities, the, this phase which was the collective construction where the site was um, transformed into a um, uh, a sort of open construction site, and the act of construction was a cultural act, in fact, and the social act, uh, which is the contrary of um, you know how traditional uh, a construction site works. And 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 this uh, last phase, which is uh, the phase of um, using the garden, where the idea was that the space would not would would not cost anything, uh, will produce what it consumes. So we try to organize kind of um, closed loops as for example, producing the energy that was necessary for, uh, for the use of space, uh, producing the water or collecting the rainwater, producing the compost and so, so on. And the space was meant to be run on a voluntary basis. So um, we invested, um, uh, 90,000 uh, euros in during three years, uh, but now the space is run with zero cost, and I feel that this is uh, very important, uh, and also very important as as a demonstration of uh, how funds can 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 be used um, more efficiently. Uh, so these are moments from the construction um, period. Uh, we of course uh, recycle materials. So we recycle the um, the soil, uh, this is the uh, toilet, um, the compost toilet, uh, uh, and the rainwater collection. Uh, and also, uh, under the model of EcoBox, we uh, encourage groups to be formed around these uh, ecological uh, devices in such a way that they are uh, taken care of, so there are people that are developing skills around this. And again, we allow the diversity of activities to take place. Uh, and this is how it looked after uh, three years. Uh, and also it sort of um, uh, evolved and took over um, the space. And I think it's, uh, it's very important because it is not uh, properly um, a proper uh, public space. It is a collective space which sometimes becomes public when people are deciding to make it public, as for example in this picture or in this picture. Uh, but it, it is a sort of activator of the public space in front of it, uh, a public space which currently you know, uh, is, is not functioning. Uh, th there are lots of problems on, on these streets and that you know, a few months ago a, a guy was killed, for example. So, uh, so it's, it's a tough, um, uh, area and I think uh, such a project helps uh, people to have a different uh, relation between each other, and this is how um, how uh, how the space has evolved in time. 
uh, seen from a window of, uh, of a neighbor. Um, so how it has been transformed. And uh, I think during this, uh, we have produced the space, but we have produced also um, a sort of um, knowledge uh, um, around uh, issues that were um, uh, discussed. For example, this is a, 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 seri a fanzine that is publishing uh, uh, the series of uh, debates that took place in the space. Uh, and, and these are also two, uh, a series that we are editing as a, as a group uh, uh, called ACT. So we, we have edited the Urban Act and the Translocal Act in relation with these projects that we are developing and, uh, and with other uh, networks that we have activated uh, during the projects. And, and this, these are the same type of uh, diagrams that um, uh, follow the same language as uh, the ones that we have done for Ecobox, where, where we can see that this project was much shorter. Uh, the construction period, again, was much shorter than for Ecobox. And we had uh, different relations with actors uh, outside um, of the project. So somehow we, we kind of compressed the whole process that in Ecobox took uh, five years, in this project took only three years. And also these are the activities that um, uh, took place in the project. So again, uh, much, much more intense. Um, and this is a much more balanced uh, relation between uh, input and <laughs> output somehow uh, uh, between the funding and the, the labor that we have put in the project. Uh, so, so this is how we can compare them. For example, this is the Ecobox timeline and this is the 56. This is, uh, again, the Ecobox uh, activities, CAPE, and this is the 56. Um, and uh, again, this, this is the funding uh, scape. And the project, um, it's, it's mainly about creating, uh, hosting uh, collective ecological practices in the city. And uh, for, for us, it was, we wanted to demonstrate that on two, 200 square meters, in fact, you can, with 200 square meters, you can activate the neighborhood. But, and, uh, you know, it is a place where people are learning about how to manage space in the city somehow. Uh, about how this this relationship between uh, uh, you know natural phenomena uh, uh, and uh, and around uh, everyday life practices can take place and uh, in fact with these projects that were very tiny very local um, uh, we realized that there is a limit of um, how we can address uh, bigger questions and bigger scale questions uh, because they, both of them, they were uh, somehow about other forms of leisure in the city and more, more um, let's say, more active forms of leisure or activating people through uh, leisure spaces. Uh, and uh, our question was that um, maybe uh, if we want to change something we have to go beyond uh, spaces for leisure and maybe we have to uh, imagine spaces where people can live and can work uh, in a different way in a more active way uh, and and this is the only way that maybe we can uh, provide an answer to this big question how we um, how we consume our planet how how we live on our planet um, that because now uh, we are consuming two planets and a half, uh, and this is an average. Uh, in, in the States, I think we are consuming uh, five planets and a half. And this is what we wanted to address. I mean, a, a sort of very, uh, um, very ambitious question uh, with, uh, with the current project, RURBAN, which is a strategy of uh, bottom-up uh, urban resilience. So, uh, in fact, we started uh, Rurban with this question in 2008, and uh, uh, you, are, uh, you base a lot in our uh, first previous project uh, in which you are able to, to 
to verify this possibility of, of the project to be continued by the user and to be multiplied by them. And in fact, uh, in 2008, uh, when we started to ask ourselves about uh, which kind of project we want to develop after 2008, uh, we studied a lot of uh, analysis um, studies, including by example the IPCC report from 2007. It was the last one before the new one, uh, edited uh, three months before. And in, two, in 2007 report by IPCC, they conclude uh, about the impossibility uh, to act against the glo global crisis in other ways except by global decisions and global actions. What I mean that, uh, in fact, you are in front of a lot of uh, global crises, climate one, uh, energy one, food, uh, uh, financial, etc. And uh, nobody could act locally or um, even nationally. In fact, it's, um, uh, the only possibility is to have accords between USA and China and Russia, between North country and BRIC um, or South country, and that never, uh, n nothing happened in this sense. And you are all of us in this impossibility to act against this global crisis because there are not uh, ways, there are not uh, approach for that. And based on in our previous project, we discovered this possibility to act locally, but to give the opportunity of people to develop the project later or new project. It's what you call a rhizomatic movement or project. So our idea is it was to try maybe to act against this global crisis locally, but with the possibility to be continued and multiplied by the user, by the stakeholders and other partners. So it's what you call actually R urban. It's R from resilience, from uh, recycling, from um, a lot, from revolution if you want. And I think there are uh, uh, specifically three or four principles. One is to use uh, networks, networks of people, network of uh, small space, of interstitial space, not just huge space, but they could be temporary ones, in order to act quickly, to don't expect to have big space, uh, permanent uh, bills, etc. cetera. Uh, acting uh, by participation, by bottom-up uh, bottom uh, process in order to provoke this kind of local governances and uh, appropriation of space and management of space. And uh, developing local circuits too, but in multiple way by different uh, nature of closed circuits, uh, trash one, recycling, economic closed circuits, uh, cultural one, and provoking uh, transversality between them. And we started by a series of diagrams and study uh, possible to be developed in a um, banal average city everywhere in the world, in which it's possible to develop uh, different kind of units. One could be a renovation of a, a house building in a cooperative ecological housing. Another one could be a, a place for local culture in order to don't have just MTV culture everywhere. Another, another place could be a temporary or permanent one dedicated to urban ag agriculture in order to develop local food and uh, space for social enterprise and social economy. And of course, with uh, small distance, possible to be uh, connected by walk or by bike. And uh, in the same time, the idea is to develop this bottom-up uh, new ways of uh, collective governance by time bank, by local change system, by mutualization of different device, etc. And uh, it's, uh, I repeat, in the same time to, to develop closed circuits in each unit or between units, for example, the organic waste could be used locally in a small garden, but usually you have much more organ waste in housing, uh, and in this case, he could be composted and used for a garden for in urban agriculture, and the products they could be uh, used by the residents, or they could be sold or re produce uh, re, uh, um, transformed by in food and uh, restaurants. And this kind of uh, circuits, they could involve different nature and some transversality. So provo uh, provoking cultural polarity and producing local jobs, things like that. And uh, this was in 2008, uh, eight, when uh, you started this strategy, strategy, it was really unusual. 
Actually, it's what's happened in the um, circular economy. It's what they promote, but in 2008, uh, nobody don't speak really so much about that. And in our case, it was much more a way to provoke a change in, in our everyday life because all of these big uh, global crises, in fact, they are provoked by our way of life, by our everyday life. You, you consume too much oil, you consume too much water, you consume too much energy, etc. And uh, helpfully, there are some poor countries who live in a lower level, but they want to live like us. It's what some people they call Westernization. And uh, the risk is if everyone wants to live in this way, is to explore the planet, to don't be able to um, to consume too much and to pollute too much. So the idea is to transform, to produce new way of living, new everyday lifestyle in the developed country in order to, to give another method of, another way of living. And they are tentative, but usually people, usual people, they care about ecology. They don't like to reduce the consumption of water. They don't like to reduce the heating system. And in fact, ecology scare people. And uh, Guattari, by example, he speaks about the capacity of the capitalist to provoke desire. Usually every one of us, you want a bigger car, a bigger house, a new laptop or uh, iWatch, etc. And uh, of course, this uh, capacity to provoke desire, uh, it's very important in capitalism and it's very, uh, uh, it's not enough in ecology and our project they was able to provoke this kind of desire to be developed by users, by stakeholders. And our hypothesis, it was to, to try to develop, like Doina, she say, a more complex movement, including not just free time, but work time and living time too. So we started in different locations, but finally in the northwest of Paris, it was more successful on the beginning, in 2009, starting with 2009, in a city called Colombe near to La Défense, here. And uh, it's a mixed seed banlieue area with uh, big uh, housing, uh, and the picture is taken from a tower by, with 30 level of housing, and uh, individual housing too. And it started by uh, meeting people, local organizations, and uh, st uh, mapping with them uh, uh, land opportunities, sometimes temporary ones, and you choose the three locations uh, two, they are temporary. Uh, one is dedicated for urban agriculture, another one for social economy, and another one for uh, cooperative housing. And you st in order to obtain funds, uh, you started to quantify which kind of closed circuits you are able to produce between the three locations, and uh, including uh, reused water, uh, local energy, uh, recycling, different kind of waste, organic or neutral ones, uh, creating cultural connections and economical and local jobs. And uh, based on this diagram, you are able to obtain uh, the necessary funds. So you started with nothing, in fact, again. And uh, the city hall, they was interested by they tell us to don't have money. and. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, you was able to obtain one million half of euros and to build uh, the two first units. So the first one is the Agrocité, dedicated to urban agriculture, where people, they learn how to produce local food and to, 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 to like, to, 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 to appreciate this kind of local food and uh, organic, etc. And there are three big parts in the agro city. One is in the middle for the local uh, community gardens in order to create uh, social interaction between us and uh, local people, because on the beginning you don't know anyone. And a part uh, left side is for the uh, farmer uh, production, it's more professional, and uh, down part it's uh, much more for pedagogy activity, pedagogical activity connected to environment and uh, agriculture. And of course, you study more precisely all the circuits, including biodiversity, in order to preserve biodi biodiversity, uh, doing a kind of agroecology and uh, connecting local, the local markets in order to obtain uh, more organic uh, waste and uh, some uh, 
schools on the neighborhood, they start to be uh, interested and involved. And it started, what I said before, with the um, family and community gardens in order to create this social interface in a, in a place unclean before. And, uh, and after that, uh, 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 it was a farm a part, the professional part developed, like here. And later you start to build a place possible to, to host all the activity or a part of them in the winter time. And uh, actually the place is like here. So the building they are ecological. So they, uh, by example, the ground, it's uh, recycling material. The, uh, wood it's uh, re-employed, uh, the insulation is with uh, the lapai, strobel, uh, etc. And, uh, and in a way, again, it's against the usual mentality because in this poor area, because it's a poor area again, the people, they don't like to recycling. They don't uh, consider the waste in a positive way. So it has a huge pedagogical um, subliminal, if you prefer, uh, uh, activity in order to, to, to explain them the capacity, uh, the importance of recycling, etc. And actually they are really involved in this kind of uh, activity. And uh, you have a, a place to, to collect the rainwater in order to, uh, to use the, the water for the garden. This is a, a prototype of the heating uh, using compost was just uh, installed some weeks before in the place. And so there are a lot of closed circuits connecting the building with the farm uh, land, including food production, aquapony, uh, heating. And uh, the farmer, they develop uh, he, um, uh, irrigation yeah, uh, systems and uh, in uh, very using very uh, few water and uh, they um, planted to and they done uh, to 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 plant uh, more like 200 different species of vegetable species they test different uh, agricultural techniques within the capacity of land to keep the water so it was a place for experimenting different techniques and to observe the capacity of the soil to be regenerated. So it's like a pedagogical farm in a way. And the idea is it was true and it is to, to develop an economic model in order to, to, to be able to, to keep the, the place without public money. Uh, because it was f uh, funded on the beginning by public money, by, but you try to develop a place in order to develop economic activity and other kind of activity, pedagogical free time ones. And sorry, take. and uh, actually the place is like that. So the building is covered too with uh, vegetation, of course. And uh, the recycle of the second units dedicated to recycling local waste and uh, to develop uh, social economy by, via eco-design and eco-construction. It's located in a cul-de-sac in a, in a uh, street who was uh, stopped by a highway. And uh, so you consider it to be a b paradigmatic situation for the future when maybe uh, uh, you choose to have less cars uh, because uh, you move differently. And so the uh, paradigmatic situation is it was how to use the parking space between uh, trees because there are trees on the street on, uh, in order to, to develop other activity and you choose to use uh, because it's a temporary location again you choose to use the container system in order to don't have foundations just to put them and they was insulated with uh, straw again and use the containers like foundation for the second level building wood in which you, you, we develop actually a corking space. And in the container level, you develop a making space for uh, eco-design using local waste. And uh, actually, the, uh, it's a team who start to develop uh, professionally the space, but there are more and more local people 
interested to use the space uh, temporarily, for instance, but some of them they plan to use for professional activity. And parallel, you develop uh, a lot of way to involve people in different level of decision, of different level of uh, developing the project later. And uh, there are a lot of uh, meetings, a lot of uh, workshops inv involving and, uh, different researchers in, from Europe or from Australia sometimes. And uh, students from uh, different countries, they come regularly. This one, they are uh, repair cafe activities, so they are voluntary who come to repair for, uh, to don't, uh, uh, to, to save the, the domestic uh, usual objects including uh, bikes uh, repair and actually we just built a series of uh, um, small cars with bikes, used bikes. And uh, there are communication uh, workshops with local people, uh, different screenings and uh, the space uh, he could be used again with uh, giving key to people, to stakeholders um, a lot of time on the day and night. And it's the only space like that in in the area. And uh, so for us, this is a way to provoke desire uh, by concrete ways uh, in order to, to, to offer the opportunity of people to, to develop a new kind of everyday life uh, practice. And one of the more difficult steps is uh, to provoke in France uh, less uh, the entrepreneurship uh, condition because uh, like Doina she mentioned before in a post welfare state condition sometimes it's very difficult to to uh, to provoke dynamics in order to to involve people in uh, self uh, eco in self initiated economy but finally it's possible so in recycle especially there are people to develop uh, repair cafe but uh, there are other ones to initiate a small group uh, and uh, specialized in recycling and they have actually some uh, local commands, local commissions, sorry. And they are designer in residency to trying to develop uh, eco-design prototypes and uh, coaching activity and different kind of seminar and uh, you develop actually a database about uh, local waste. And in AgroCite 2, uh, they are, uh, step by step different stakeholders and group of initiative developing uh, local shop non consumer shop uh, exchange uh, in sh uh, skills uh, a farm market uh, training activity and actually you work in uh, um, economic model in different kind of uh, economic model for different group of people so this is a small diagram discussed with the residents, right? and you try to learn them about economy, about uh, redistributing funds, about uh, covering the cost of the space, etc. And it's uh, in France. It's a very, uh, it's a very new task, in fact. And this is the location of the agrocité, and the idea is to. Because you start the second and maybe a soon a third location, maybe is to, is to provoke a movement of uh, bottom-up initiative. And actually, there are new municipalities to contact us to develop this kind of uh, urban device in their uh, city. And um, you hope maybe to create a movement of bottom-up uh, new way of living, of everyday living, in order to reduce what you show you before. And actually, uh, you developed the exercise, similar exercise, but in a different uh, context in Istanbul, who is exhibited uh, actually in MoMA in New York, in, in, a, new in uh, a new in growth exhibition, with the idea to provoke bottom up uh, uh, dynamics in a very top down uh, way of production of space, and very abstract and with just profit um, motivations and uh, our idea is maybe to it's probably to open this kind of acting to more and more possible professional uh, actors uh, amateurial actors local actors in, in an open source system and maybe passing from a local bottom action to larger scale bottom action maybe to give an answer in a very difficult condition in, in which you are all of us 
today. And also maybe to pass from co-producing the city to co-producing the planet. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dorna and Constantine. And I would like to uh, now open up for the Q&A. And I would like to ask uh, you to join the table. And I will also use this opportunity to join the table with you. That was uh, fascinating. A question kept on uh, reverberating, in my, which is, what was the role or what is the role of local government in enabling the spaces to be turned into what they were turned into? Maybe here in Boston or in the US, we're very sensitive to things like permitting, to things like ownership, et cetera. And I don't know if that question has arisen, and if so, how you dealt with it. Um, and a related, um, I guess, question had to do with the eviction of the echo box. After all of the success, on what basis, and maybe you said it, but I didn't quite get it, on what basis was the eviction even justified? Why would anybody want to evict that? And perhaps it's a naive question, but maybe not. Uh, maybe I'll try to answer. Um, I'll, I'll start answering the last question, which is, I think, uh, uh, a question that we ask ourselves as well. <laughs> um, because it's, uh, it's different, it's difficult to, to understand uh, why um, local governments, for example, would not uh, immediately buy into such projects and uh, support. Uh, uh, yeah, w when we started uh, EcoBox, um, we didn't um, work with the lo local government. We we uh, negotiated the um, occupation and the lease with the owner of uh, of um, of the pl uh, of, of this location, uh, which was this uh, disused um, uh, one house, and the owner was the railway company. But they were very um, open because they knew that they will have to sell the location, and uh, and. Um, uh, the municipality of Paris bought it, uh, so uh, somehow it passed from a, a sort of public uh, company to a public municipal to a m municipality or to a local municipality. But uh, uh, the only uh, reference that they had with temporary use were the squats, and uh, they were extremely. Um, uh, reluctant uh, to negotiate uh, a, relo a relocation. Uh, they thought that we will uh, completely oppose, uh, you know, uh, any relocation. So they invited, uh, they, they wanted to evict us rather than relocate us. And then I think uh, we were prepared from the very beginning to be relocated and uh, we wanted to um, um, uh, somehow um, move from this kind of uh, uh, situation in which uh, uh, people would just try for space and they won't leave uh, when uh, when a new project uh, would be proposed by them. But, you know that that there were other processes. Uh, for, the, the space was meant to to become, and which which happened, in fact, uh, a, a quite big uh, public project. So now there is a uh, um, uh, uh, an education unit, uh, a gymnasium, and a, a youth hostel uh, that were built uh, on the space, uh, and. Uh, uh, one option would have been to integrate the project in the new project, uh, and another option would was, and, and this is what we were going for, to claim another space for the relocation of the project. And at the end, we, we succeed. We managed to convince the, municipal, the municipality to relocate, and we demonstrated that it's possible and that we were equipped to be relocated. So this was with uh, Echo Box, but it was not easy. Uh, and I think uh, uh, we created a precedent and uh, now there are 
many temporary gardens in Paris, and I think, uh, well, Ecobox was mu much more complex than just a garden. But we realized that it is important to maybe uh, involve the, municip the municipality early on, uh, and, and this is what we did uh, in the last project. We, uh, uh, we asked the municipality, or we proposed the municipality to be a partner, uh, and we applied together for European funds. Uh, and uh, it was fine, and I think also for the municipality it was a, a sort of um, uh, process of learning how to be a partner and not to be a client or not to be the, uh, um, the, 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 the kind of uh, the, the power figure. And, uh, and I think it did succeed until <laughs> there were uh, um, local uh, municipal elections and the municipality completely shifted um, uh, last year and the new municipality uh, doesn't want to, uh, to kind of um, buy into the project. Uh, for them, uh, well, for certain people in the municipality, it is a project that has been uh, supported by the former municipality. So it has nothing to do with the public good and uh, it has to do with their politician uh, rivalities and uh, kind of, and, and, uh, and we are again in the position that we were in the beginning with Ecobox. Now, now we are sort of uh, fighting with the municipality and trying to convince them back that, um, you know, it's worth to keep the project and uh, to continue it. Uh, just shortly, uh, in fact, what uh, you discover in uh, every, from these two projects is uh, uh, politic politicians, they don't like to take risks. And uh, a project like the first one in 2001 and two, it was a risky one because uh, it was completely unusual, uh, like uh, ambience uh, by, by auto, auto, auto gestion or auto gestion. Self Self-management and uh, and by uh, using in a temporary way, it was completely unusual because usually the squads they fight to keep the the same space against the owner. So and uh, the politician they don't was able to to be a partner in this kind of project on the beginning because it was uh, not uh, uh, they don't was a reference in this kind of uh, approach and. In the same time, you discover politicians like uh, someone uh, who think they're in very short terms because they are elected for four, five, six years, it depends. And uh, this kind of project, they, uh, and, uh, they ask, they demand much more time. And, and uh, by example, it's the case in the third project because uh, the municipality changed. And our strategy is to combining different uh, funds from the region, from the district from the Europe, it's a way to overpass the politi uh, politician, uh, political time uh, if, if they change. And you don't know what are tactics, but it's a good one. So in a way you are um, autonomous and you are able to develop a project, uh, impossible to be developed uh, by other ways, because in 2008 when you start uh, Air Urban, nobody don't speak in France and uh, government level, etc., about resilience, about closed circuit. So we are able to develop by ourselves this kind of commission to be self-commissioned in order to develop this kind of project and program. And this is a way to overpass the political partners if they are not able to enter in the project. I have a question. Okay. Thank you so much for your wonderful uh, lecture. Um, I have uh, actually two questions, maybe they are just short. The first is uh, met to methodology of your work. I was fascinated by these uh, beautiful diagrams and the way you actually also are mapping your own process and success of the project. Um, and uh, would like to ask you to tell a little bit more about the way you um, obtain data for some of these visualizations, for example, the actor network uh, part or these beautiful line diagrams. Um, you know, how was that, so to say, was this based on interviews or, um, and how did you go about that? So that's one. And the other is about, the, because here we are in the architecture and design school and artistic uh, context, 
Um, I'm curious about the artistic, uh, architectural design aspect of your work. How much does the aesthetic and symbolic dimension of your architecture contribute to the success of these projects? Because you are creating these new spaces and they have a certain uh, aesthetic appeal as well. Um, and, and you're purposely choosing these temporary types of architecture. So I, I just would like you to speak a bit about, um, you know, how you design uh, uh, things and, and where does that play into the, the work? Thank you. Um, uh, to the first question, um, in fact, um, we had a camera during the, the whole process and I think that uh, the type of data that we have obtained uh, are data from inside out somehow, uh, are data that one cannot have without being really involved in a project. So this camera was on the table um, every day and whoever wanted to document something would use the camera. So we have a, a quite huge video archive that we have uh, tagged, um, um, you know, there with friends that uh, have developed a software for, um, video archiving um, and uh, and this was a sort of participative documentation because it's filmed by the user and, and by those that wanted to record uh, something that was important for them and and we were we managed to um, reconstitute somehow the process of the project by looking at by screening this uh, archive uh, where we one can see uh, you know there were tags by persons for example or tags by places or by activities uh, one can really see what uh, one has done during the five years and uh, I think this was the basis uh, of the data that we have used when we have uh, represented these diagrams and the, the video archive was something that was communicated also uh, internally so people would have access to the video archive. Uh, we, we did a number of editings, uh, participatory editings with uh, so who, whoever wanted to edit um, sequences from the archive uh, according to different topics of their interest could use this. And, and the type of representation that we have produced are, uh, let's say, research uh, representation and they are functioning within uh, another uh, <coughs> uh, field, which is, uh, you know, research in architecture, for example. And we can, we are able to communicate and advocate somehow for a particular approach in architecture uh, and for a particular type of architecture which doesn't represent necessarily through sections and plans a space, but to represent the social architecture of a project. And uh, I think uh, we were somehow successful in promoting this new form of representation of a project which is a process, um, uh, a, a project which is a network of relations. Uh, so yeah, so this is uh, the, the answer to the first question. And um, uh, the second question was about aesthetics. And um, I think we were, uh, uh, aesthetics um, was, was not a priority for us, but, but nevertheless, when uh, enacted a form of aesthetics that um, uh, can evolve also with the contribution of others. So, uh, I think we uh, adopted somehow, uh, at least in the first project, uh, a poor aesthetic uh, with some minimal rules. Like for example, we have used the palette as a, as a unit, as a module for whatever we created. And, um, uh, and we, we sort of um, uh, allow this palette to be transformed in many ways. And of course the palette would uh, secure unity or aesthetic unity within the project, but at the same time would allow many uh, configurations that were not necessarily in our control, uh, like the different ways of reorganizing the garden in time and, and so on. Uh, 
uh, the last project, uh, we wanted, I think, uh, to, um, to demonstrate that uh, architecture uh, can showcase, can have a role in instigating these uh, bottom-up strategies of resilience, can be appealing to people, can showcase all these processes that happen, so that's why uh, we wanted to have these ecological devices, to have a sort of exemplary buildings that would uh, uh, make visible, um, you know, another way of building, another way of inhabiting a building uh, collectively. And I think this, this was an interesting uh, architectural question, and also there were issues of size and of, uh, you know, of particular, uh, use of materials that uh, were somehow, uh, um, you know, a challenge <laughs> for us. Uh, and, uh, and we wanted it to be uh, appealing, to, be, uh, uh, to speak also to architects and not only to, uh, to users, to, uh, to, to be um, um, interesting also within the professional realm to, to push somehow the discussion about ecological architecture further and to add uh, the economical and social aspects um, as, 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 as important aspects to it. In fact, um, uh, using this video archive, but not just every email exchange, uh, my diary, a lot of information, he was able to build a database with a lot of parameters, significant parameters, like uh, who come, when, uh, when he shift to other activity, uh, with which other people, etc. So you try to combine them in different significant uh, ways, uh, by space, by motivation, by connections, etc. And in fact, uh, uh, for us, they are not representation, they are much more like, uh, like data scapes. So it's a way to represent the process in his uh, significant uh, elements. And what is important too, they was done after the process. So uh, when you was involved in the process, uh, you was much more like every one of them. But after trying to, to communicate to other people, to professional, but not just, uh, you try to, to represent in an appropriate way uh, being involved. So it's uh, like, uh, molecular representation of a one-to-one -one representation because you, you know all of the people, including the kids, for a very long period. So it's at the same time, it's a very microscopic representation and a long-term representation. And it's done after the construction of the project because if not, it's like engin design engineering and social uh, engineering, and you don't do that. And it was a little the risk for urban project because in urban project, in order to be able to uh, to program five years, uh, a five year pro long term project, and uh, with uh, long a lot of specific uh, quantification about CO2, about waste, uh, etc., it was a risk to plan too much, to planify too much, the, and in order to don't uh, be kept by this uh, danger, uh, you try to quantify just the material uh, elements and not subjective ones, but to be open to, 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 to alert or phenomena from social point of view, because if not, again, it's like engineering and you are not in this position. And uh, speaking about uh, aesthetics and uh, symbolic, uh, for us, like Dona, she said, it's not really important. M the more important, it's much more uh, like it's like a participatory aesthetic because everyone could uh, be involved, but in a very low level. Because if not, if not, it's like a competition between people to to decorate, to 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 come with their own discourse. So you try to build a co-discursive situation, but with uh, uh, minimum participation from everyone in order to be represented, all of them. Because if not, it's like a cacophony, like a huge, uh, everyone must be more and more represented. So it's a risk if you enter in this direction. Yeah, but, but at least this, is, this was our position. I, mean, I, I think what it you call much more emerging design, by example, the second project is drawn by the uh, urban <laughs> regulations. <laughs> yeah. By example, the second project is drawn by the urban regulations. 
all the volume is, the, is decided by the local urban regulation. So it's a emerging design. It's not designed by us in a way. It's designed, designed by the con local conditions. Yeah, because the space was very constraining. Uh, having this, uh, we speak about passage, facta, uh, passage 56, that there were windows on, on these two tall buildings and there are uh, you know, specific restrictions in the distance that one uh, can adopt in order to start to build. And, and we sort of draw the constraints and then we build the maximum that could be built within these constraints. Hello, um, I'm just, I'm curious to know about uh, if you had any <coughs> strategies or were looking at or thinking about the potential for gentrification in those areas, especially with the, the last project, um, because there's a significant amount of financial investment into those areas. And if you, um, uh, yeah, just if you had plans for, for that, um, or we're anticipating that, or um, think about that in terms of um, how you project the project 10 years down the line? Um, I think this is an important question for, for the big cities. Um, in the first, the first project, uh, which was in a sort of inner Paris, um, and we were uh, aware uh, that, you know, playing the kind of temporary use game, we are maybe agents of gentrification or we are kind of com complying with uh, the process of gentrification that takes place in the area. Um, but uh, we sort of tactically, uh, um, uh, adopted this uh, long-term or uh, everlasting temporary equipment that would continually um, relocate itself and will continually reclaim another space so in such a way that uh, uh, the project is lasting even longer that it would have stay in one single space and it activates a number of people that at their turn they start to claim space and so on. So I, I think it was rather a sort of uh, anti-gentrification uh, tactic. Uh, in the last project, um, some of the, uh, of the units are uh, temporary, some um, necessarily, well, uh, the cooperative housing will, will be permanent. We don't have started yet uh, because of this change in, with, with the municipality, but um, uh, one of uh, the next steps in the project is to uh, build a, a, co a cooperative development trust uh, that will uh, manage the, the different urban units and that will little by little acquire uh, land or uh, negotiate temporary lease for other places. I mean, with this idea of creating urban commons, then urban commons, I think, uh, do not necessarily need always uh, common property, but common use. Uh, so we, we are looking into ways of using space collectively as a form of, uh, you know, uh, anti-gentrification, and, and, and we imagine now this uh, uh, institution, organization that will continually work uh, around this. In fact, it's exactly that. Uh, uh, we try with our approach uh, to, to fight against the gentrification. Uh, usually gentrification uh, combined, but in a very simplistic way, uh, two things. One is to have a better, uh, I don't know, uh, equipment and uh, more, etc. And the second one, to exclude poor people from that because the price rise, etc. But uh, in fact, what you try is to involve people in project like this one in order to be, uh, to have visibility, to be recognized, to be uh, considered, and, and by this way to be a partner and in a dialogue about the change of urban uh, conditions. So in the same time, uh, uh, um, 
the pro last project cost much more money, like the first ones, but in fact it's a very low price for the construction comparing with the average. So in the co-housing especially, you try to build not like half the price, but between two third um, part of the price, normal price. So it's a way to offer the accessibility of, uh, of normal housing to more poor people. So it's a way to uh, fight against gentrification. So there are different tactics to, to try to do that. Uh, it's not the absolute one. Of course, uh, you need much more uh, diversity in this kind of um, strategy and tactics, but this one could be two of them. Maybe. So visibility and credibility to poor people and uh, low price. Thank you. Um, the title of the series uh, in which you guys are appearing is called Toward a Civic Art. And I guess my question is how, in the context of what, you're, what you describe, the work that you're doing, how do you relate that to the phrase, a civic art? Maybe you should do this, okay. <laughs> because you, <laughs> <laughs> you invited us. <laughs> OK. I, actually, I would like to speak to that, you know? Uh, um, not, not, you know, not that I'm stealing your voice, you know, because your voice is very present, actually, behind this idea. And uh, uh, first of all, I'm thank you very much for for your compelling presentation. Uh, uh, that uh, that is great continuation of what we're trying to also map through this series towards uh, civic art. You know, starting with uh, Doris Sommer practice, and I'm, st you know, I'm I'm arguing, you know. Uh, all these instances, you know, Doris Sommer and our last week, uh, uh, who opened the series last week, but also the, our second presenter, uh, Jana von Heiswick, uh, who is coming from a, a radical pedagogy practice, uh, and now we have uh, and now we have relational political practice through architecture, right? So, so we have the territories that's been uh, sources of inspiration for. Uh, uh, you know, in the territory of art, you know, artists uh, and art territory uh, is uh, continuously attempting, you know, continuously making these attempts to lend itself to other fields, right? You know, in architecture, pedagogy, um, uh, 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 literature, and uh, and so on and so forth, and uh, and of course, by doing that, not only looking for the inspirations. Uh, uh, but precisely looking for the opportunities, um, uh, how the field uh, and how the territory uh, of art uh, can be pushed forward, right? Like you know, so, so, uh, uh, and uh, and by doing that, you know, you uh, uh, you are achieving, you know, uh, something that Kepesh perhaps also was uh, imagining, you know, when he was. Uh, when he was uh, uh, saying uh, uh, or describing uh, as environmental homeostasis, right? Which is like, you know, ability of the systems, of the natural systems, including the nature and our body to um, uh, recuperate, you know, to uh, recombine and to kind of like build, uh, build resilience, right? So, um, uh, what is interesting for me, you know, in terms of in terms of your work, is uh, is that uh, you are addressing this, uh, but also uh, actively engaging the process of learning, right? Engaging the process of, of learning. When you're saying that it is uh, it is important to uh, to see how uh, how the idea of self learning and self management can be. Uh, uh, in uh, um, can be exercised, you know, or can be enticed even, you know, through the specific forms, you know. And here, of course, you know, we have these forms of drawing, we have forms of, we have forms of mapping, we have forms, as yes, you were just, you know, uh, referred to the archives, you know, continuous production of the archives. So these different forms, I think, they are, uh, they're producing, uh, they're producing, uh, uh, these moments, right? You know that uh, that lead towards the self-learning and self-management, and uh, and uh, and this is, uh, I think, uh, again, I'm going back to this question of art. You know, um, 
uh, I think you know uh, we are talking about forms of uh, we are talking about forms of uh, of civic art that is. Uh, uh, positioned itself uh, uh, with a very active engagement uh, uh, with the, um, you know, with this kind of like larger ideas, you know, that concern with environment, right? Uh, and I think uh, when when Kepes is talking about you know civic art and uh, he's talking in the very particular situation of uh, of engaging with the environmental crisis of 70s, right? Uh, today. Uh, we have full acknowledgement of what the crisis is, you know, in many frontiers, you know. So no longer we only talk about ecological crisis, we're talking about the political crisis, we're talking about the crisis of the economy and of the, of the politics, right? So we are talking about larger crisis of humanities, right? And I think uh, that's where, you know, so, so today these practices are precisely uh, approaching the crisis on the many registers, right? So, so it is not just one register, right? Therefore, the practice, you know, uh, has to be very multifaceted, right? Uh, and uh, you are alluding to rhizomatic in terms of the, the way how you engage the processes, right? But I think uh, rhizomatic for me also, it is the ability of the, of the art, of the art form, right? Of, uh, of engaging the organizational, aspect, right? And engaging organizational aspects on, on many registers of the project. Um, and I think uh, here I would, I, would, I would try to kind of like suggest kind of like different paradigm than architects or maybe uh, designers would kind of like suggest it, right? Because uh, still for me, it is yet, you know, in the territory of art, you know, the territory of the design, right? Because there are these two projects that are going on. It is not only the production of the function, but constant interrogation of the uh, how this function is being produced, right? So therefore, I see the critical vehicle in this project ver very much, which is, uh, in fact, uh, uh, it is characteristic to the uh, artistic practices. Uh, just to end, maybe. Uh, in fact, our presentation is not about civic art. It's about civic and culture much more. Uh, people like uh, this one who they are involved in our project, more of them, maybe 90% they are don't care about art. In fact, they don't know exactly what I mean. They, are, they care about beauty, about n nice things, but they usually they don't go to museum, to exhibitions, etc. They look TV, yeah? This is a reality. And uh, uh, doing this kind of project, in fact, you offer the opportunity for this kind of population to discover a lot of different things, ecological ones, economical ones, cultural too. So discover, they discover step by step different things. I am not sure if they discover art, but, disco but they discover different kind of culture, usually not uh, uh, presented on TV, by example, it's changed. And and why it's important that? Because civic is in a crisis moment, civic sense. There was attentat in Paris in 7 January of January, and after that it was a huge manifestation with two or three million people. But there was very few people from banlieue because they don't recognize in this kind of elitist culture. In this is a reality. So actually, the French uh, political elite uh, they are really shocked because they discover a society very fragmented with different kind of opinions. And it's not just the French in Copenhagen after that and that there was a lot of flowers in the place where the killer uh, he died. Like. So uh, they, they are people who don't think like us. So the civic sense must to be rebuilded. And this kind of uh, <coughs> civic five last. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is important for me, the civic and the culture, because the culture is against uh, individualism, it's against consumerism, so it's a very, uh, it's a very necessary attitude necessary to be rebuilt today together with these people, because they lost, in fact, uh, they are not in contact with us. So in our picture, they are not people like you. There are a lot of them, they are very less educated, they are very mixed. So this is for us uh, very important, how to, to reconnect us with them 
and including economy, ecology, or other important value, possible to be like a, transla like a translation. For them, this is more important on the beginning. Yeah, thank you very much. So towards civic art. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. To be, towards civic art, to be